Uh, welcome to this webinar hosted by Smartsheet and Hastings Borough Council to discuss uh, the use of Smartsheet by the Council to drive transformation and change. Uh, my name is Sir Faraz Ali. Uh, I'm VP of EMEA at Smartsheet. I've worked in the office productivity and collaboration space for close to 15 years, and I've been very fortunate to have worked with Stephen and Mary over the last 18 months or so, and and seen the kind of innovation they've brought to the Council in terms of driving change, driving transformation. Uh, presenting today from the Council are Stephen Dodson and Mary Collingridge uh, on their journey with Smartsheet. Uh, they'll be going over a few slides. Uh, this is a small group, so feel free to ask questions via the chat feature uh, in Microsoft Teams. Um, you can also raise your hand using the using a feature in the tool, uh, and we can get you off to new taking a and you can ask questions. A uh, couple of, uh, uh, I'll introduce Stephen and Mary and then hand over to them. Stephen has worked for local and central government in a variety of capacities and is currently head of transformation and programs at the council, where he's responsible for introducing, delivering a wide range of digital cultural change and, manage, and, and, and managing mission critical programs for the council. An essential part of this role has been the introduction of Smartsheet to build a PMO, um, to, to, to develop an effective, uh, uh, corporate standard for risk, resource, performance management based on and towards ISO 9001. Uh, Mary started the council uh, approximately 11 years ago in the contact center and is currently responsible for developing the My Hastings self portal as well as project management, business analysis, and the implementation development of the Smartsheet platform. With that, I'll invite Stephen to kick things off. Thank you. Thanks, Alfraz. Uh, welcome, everybody. Um, I really appreciate your time. I, I can expect to, like many of us in local government, you've never been busier. Uh, so I hope this is worthwhile and I uh, hope we can give you something of use to take away. More than happy to have follow up conversations after the event, of course. Yeah. Um, and we'll provide our contact details. So I'm going to try and get to the nitty gritty as soon as possible. We'll just give a little bit of background. So um, Hastings Borough Council, District Council, probably most the famously named town in the UK, although some of you may may not agree with that. Um, but it's we're here on the south coast. We've got a population of 83,000, but again, we face high levels of deprivation, similar to many seaside and other, other smaller towns. Um, we now have a total of um, only 350 FTEs, um, and that's been dragged down from 650 eight years ago. Um, our budget has been reduced by two thirds in the same period. However, we're still, like many local authorities, still aiming to deliver the same levels of service that the citizen expects the same. Uh, their aspiration hasn't changed, their needs, their wants, their requirements. And of course, we've had to respond to those additional pressures during the pandemic, setting up new service areas, including a community hub from scratch, all of the stuff that we've all been facing. And so we've needed to have the right tools to do that. We also needed to undertake a transformation program at the same time in order to rationalize and to continue to perform to the very best that we can. Next slide, please, Mary. And of course, as a team, well, we've got 12 full time equivalents in, in my team. We're responsible for all of the ICT, all of the digital communications, including the website and the My Hastings uh, portal, uh, which is in effect our CRM system. And again, particularly during the pandemic, we've exceeded our targets for online interactions and transactions, so that's been incredibly successful. Um, also responsible for all of the transformation and change management across the organization, and not just digital. Uh, we very much look at how we can improve our service areas, and we're also responsible for all of the major projects and the programs that the council is currently engaged in, and we try and offer oversight and support. Like everybody else on our to-do list, we're about Prioritizing, don't be too key, Mary. Okay, <laughs> we're about trying to prioritize. And again, like everybody else on our to-do list, it's everything. I had a meeting with my managing director the other day, said, Jay, what do I prioritize? And she said, do everything, Stephen. So that's the situation we're in. Okay, thanks, Mary. Next slide, thank you. And the challenges, the expectations and the reality. I don't know about you guys, but often we've said we want a cake. And so we'll go out and we'll create a cake with all the ingredients, all the resources that we've got. And we go, there's your cake. And they go, 
Well, that's a Battenberg. We wanted a Black Forest. And we then go, oh, that's because that probably wasn't exactly specified right at the beginning. And then we couldn't know what all the resources were required. Could we afford that Black Forest ghetto? And then we'd have to throw the Black Forest ghetto away, sorry, the Battenberg away, and then start again on, the, on getting the Black Forest. And partly that's because the reality, there's no real corporate standard to project management. There's no complete organizational overview available to the executive in one place. So we're not entirely sure what was happening, why it was happening, who was doing it, when it was to be delivered, and how much it was costing. We were using a mixture of formats for collation and reporting. So we've got bits of Microsoft Project, we've got Excel spreadsheets, we're using Word in places, and then we've also got our ERP system as well. So we've got lots of different ways of managing various bits of information, not coordinated. So rising to our challenge, next slide please, Mary, was how do we develop a change management program? Part of that was to offer the business analysis so that we could work with the teams to validate the idea. This includes councillors' ideas. We asked people to create a basic scope so we get an overview initially of the project. Was it worth putting any further investment in? And we've got a whole sort of um, uh, authorization process for those. We asked people to spend a lot of time working on a proper swap. I know all of this sounds like management speak, but very useful and very valuable getting an epistle analysis, making sure people have really thought about the elements that need to be engaged in, creating an, uh, an options analysis so that we can then make proper evidence-based decisions, which is the cake, which is the right cake that we can actually afford, if you like. And all of that gives us a sense of setting up the project in the right manner and being able to use the right tools. In search of the right tools, was really difficult. I referred earlier, we've got bits of Microsoft Project, quite expensive, not very intuitive, not that easy to use for people who aren't familiar with it. People were doing Gantt charts in various formats. And actually, the beauty of Smartsheet was it brought it all together. I certainly, in 35 years in project program management all over the place, I wished I'd had this tool right at the beginning, particularly I was at central government on the uh, e-government program. It would have been so much easier to have rolled that out, I think. It's much more intuitive. It's simpler to use. And frankly, it's cheaper than having a Microsoft project license for everybody as well. Um, and then actually, as we started to work with it, we found it could do so much more. It created us a sense of collaborative approach to adoption. People could see the benefits of using it very quickly. So, you know, the question is, what's in it for us? Well, we could demonstrate what's in it for you. And I think we've gained, gained a, lot of, um, a lot of confidence in the product and more and more people wanting to use it. And we get people, when can we start being on it? When can we migrate to it? And actually using the smart sheet, our next step of the journey is what Mary's going to go on to, is how we're now creating the council management center. It's still a progress in work, but it's also been quite a quick one. We only began this last September, working with the team at Smartsheet. We we'll have to say, and a lot of knowledge working suppliers, been very helpful, very useful, very supportive about how we could actually take this further forward. So over to you, Mary, unless there's any questions at this point. Okay, thank you, Stephen. Okay, so I'm gonna be giving you a, just an overview of um, our council management system. So just some high level um, dashboards, so including the senior management dashboard, project dashboard, risk overview, and our performance management as well. Um, so we've used Control Centre to create our council management system, um, and this has created a workspace, which I'll go into in a minute, um, for each service area and project as they've come up. Um, we are in the process of currently transferring all our existing projects into the management system. So as I go through this demo, some of the dashboards may look low in numbers, um, or in some cases, I'll show you test sheets. So, OK, so I'm just going to change my screen. Hopefully you can see that. Yeah, great, okay. Okay, so this is our senior management dashboard. So as I mentioned, we use Control Center to set up each workspace within um, our management center. And this automatically populates all the, the, the figures for us, which is fantastic. Normally we would have spent ages trying to attach everything to the service area details and to the budget and everything else, but this, just does it, it rolls it up and it does it for you, which is great. So 
the dashboard is automatically populated every time we create a workspace. And it's just got some high level information on there. So at first we've just got some um, details of the project summary. So how many projects we've got active, how many are on target, how many have issues. Um, an overview of the risk management. So how many risks are open? Um, are there any that we need to be concerned about? Um, and also sort of a number of reports as well that we can, the management can um, click into. Bit of information about budget. Now at the moment, our, the budget in here is all estimates because we're um, hoping to connect in the future our finance system with Smartsheet, but at the moment it's just based on information that people are putting into their delivery plans, which I'll show you in a bit. Um, and then we've got the organisational overview. So each service area, we've got a RAG status um, and just a chart of um, their open um, sort of high, high issue risks and issues and things like that. So I'll just click into one of the, the service area dashboard. So this is what, yeah, one of the service area dashboards. Um, and at the top, it just gives you some really high level information about, well, who is the manager, um, some useful links you can go to. So you've got the delivery plan, RAID, and I'll go into these in a bit more detail in a moment when we look at the project side. Um, we've got the health. Now, at the moment, this is based on um, risks and issues, but we are looking at, um, you know, is this the right thing? And I think that will develop with time. You know, as we're using this, that that health may may change. So, um, and we've got some key information. So, how many projects are live? How many are overdue? And so on. We've incorporated our performance uh, monitoring into here. So here we've got um, some information about um, how many measures we've got and links to update these. And then we will have the performance per quarter, but obviously we're only just in um, finishing quarter one now. So this will be updated as we go. Um, we've got an overview of the projects that are live that that service area is dealing with and quick high level information. So end date, how complete it is, budget and so on. Budget analysis, again, working on estimates, um, but will be very useful for managers just to have a quick view of what, what's going on here. RAID management, and this is for projects and for business as usual. So it incorporates it all here. And we've got quick links to be able to add new items um, or to be able to to view your all of them in one place. Contract management. So we've we've got our smart sheet account in here. Um, so we we found actually it was quite difficult to kind of keep a track on all the contracts that um, the council has. You know what's going on, what maybe the service areas using that other services could actually be a part of, or have we got duplicate contracts all over the place? So we're hoping to move all the contract management in, into our management centre so we can keep an eye on them. Also to be notified when they're coming up to an end of, you know, do we actually need to cancel those so we're not spending too much money on stuff that we don't need? Um, or does it actually need to continue? And so we can just have that review in place. Um, and again, quick and easy places of reviewing the contracts and adding new ones in as well. And change requests. Normally you'd see change requests with project projects, but we actually thought actually that'd be quite useful to have it on service areas as well, especially at the moment with you know all the changes that have happened because of COVID. Um, service areas have gone through a number of changes, and this is just getting that authority to to confirm that that service area is going to have a change. May need extra resources or budget to do that, um, and then you've got it um, that authority to go ahead and do it. Okay, so that's a service area dashboard. I'm going to go into a project dashboard, which looks fairly similar actually, and we have a lot of the same detail. Um, so again, the, the high level information, you know, who's the project manager, what's the health of that project, and that health is being based on your risks, your um, is it on time, is it on budget, um, and you've got a, a countdown as well of how long you've got to complete 
the project, which we found really useful in the past of um, previous projects, just saying, actually, we've only got six weeks to do this. Come on, we've got to, got to get on with it. Um, and having that percentage complete as well. Uh, we've got some links to useful documents. So we've got the delivery plan or what you may know as a project plan. Um, we've got a role sheet which helps um, people identify who's actually in working on that project. So who is the project manager? Who's the project sponsor? Um, who's support? And we've found that people really previously either didn't know that they were the project manager sometimes um, or didn't have the authority to say that they were the project manager and to actually get things done. Um, and the same with the, the support. Um, and this really just, you know, says actually you have the authority to get this done um, and these are the people that are supporting you to do that. So um, we found that has really helped with our projects. Um, and also, as I'll show you in a moment, we you can actually then see an overview of who's working where as well, which helps. Um, so we have our RAID log, so that's risks, assumptions, issues and dependencies. Um, for that project. Um, a comms plan, which again is well, it's been really helpful for the communications team. Um, it means that they can use the same plan for every project and service area. Um, it automatically feeds up to their their work list so they know what they need to be working on that week. Um, and it's really helped automate their their system rather than what they used before, which was a Word document. So really help with that. Um, we've got a lessons log. Again, I mean, previously lessons log for us have been Word documents, um, which have then been filed away at the end of a project and possibly never looked at again. Should be. Um, and that's the idea of this, is that then we can actually create a, a corporate um, lesson log so we can actually refer back to it easily and quickly. Um, you know, see what we've learned from other, other projects that are similar. Um, and the contract management as well. So we have that for projects as well as for the service areas, because um, you may have um, contracts just for that particular project. So we we thought that would be useful to keep a track of. We've got the performance management in here. We've got user guides, and we've got this throughout um, our management centre. So that's on every sheet and every dashboard. We have a user guide just because obviously this is change. For the, for the council and people are you know getting used to it so we've just created these user guides hopefully they'll use them um, and we've asked for a lot of feedback as well of what's useful what actually do they need to know um, and my tasks and I'll I'll come back to this one in a moment to show you so I'll just go through the rest of the dashboard so we've got key milestones so um, this is based on information on the delivery plan bringing through um, highlighted those key milestones where we're at, um, any overdue tasks, phase completion and budget, raid items, and contract management again, and any change request and overview of what, what's waiting to be done. So these dashboards can be used for sort of checkpoint meetings. Um, so they're really, they and they're updated automatically as well, based on all the information in the sheets. So it's, you don't have to worry about you know, completing stuff every time you have a meeting or a, you know, highlight report or anything like that. So I'm just going to go and show you a couple of those sheets. So I'm going to show you the, um, our delivery plan. So very much like a, a project plan that you would have. Um, so you you have your tasks, um, you have your start and finish dates, you've got who it's assigned to. And because of that role sheet that that I mentioned earlier, it means that it actually brings through the role on here so we can see that I'm on here and it's got me down as a project manager. And I think further down we have Stephen on here as the project director. So it just brings through who's actually um, assigned to that role in, in regards to their role within the project. Got percentage complete and the status as well. And then we have the budget columns as well. People have found this really easy to use because it is based, I mean, it's very similar to Excel or to MS Project. So if they've used those before, they've actually picked it up really easily. Um, and the other 
um, sheet I want to show you here is the My Tasks. So this will look at every project within the management system and every service area. And it will tell me or whoever's logged into this sheet what your what your tasks are basically. So it's got what my roles are within all of those projects and sheets. Um, all my tasks or what's overdue. So it's highlighted them red on here of what's overdue. And it puts them all in date order. So, you know, for, for someone like me who works on a lot of projects, I can actually see quite easily and quickly what I need to work on, you know, first. So, um, I've got any raid items, so any risks or anything that have been assigned for me to manage and any contracts that are assigned to me to manage as well. Okay. So just going back to the um, the risk management, again, because of the, the automation within the um, the dashboards and the, the sheets, um, it means then we can actually, you know, push it all up to the senior management and have these dashboards for them, um, which again, update automatically. Because the managers have it on their um, service area dashboards, it means that they actually can take control of their risks and issues that are ongoing. Um, and it also means they don't have to wait to update them. You know, before it used to be a, a Word document that was sent around every few months. Now, when, when they see that it's changed, they can actually just go and update it automatically. And that will update these dashboards. So again, I mean, here, an example, a test dashboard for you, um, just to give you an idea of what is possible. Um, so you can have these charts to see actually, where do I need to focus my attention? Um, and then you've got a number of reports and things like that as well. Um, so lastly, I'm going to have a quick look at the performance um, monitoring. So I'm going to go back to that service area dashboard that we looked at earlier. And click on the view your performance measures. So every service area has this, their own uh, performance dashboard. And they can see how many measures they are. It gives the team an idea of what the measures mean, because again, that, that was quite confusing to some in the past. You know, what is a key activity? What is a performance indicator? So it just gives a little outline here and it lists all the performance indicators and whether they're public or internal as well. Um, they can then go and update them um, to for their RAG status um, or if their performance indicators, their, their target figures um, and we use dynamic view for them to do that so it's you know they only see what they have been assigned to see which has um, been really useful to use um, the performance management we've been using this for a, over a year now with Smartsheet and so it does mean that we have dashboards on our website so this is last year's so we've been able to use this to show our performance to the public. So made it a lot easier for them to see how we're doing again, rather than Word documents that we used to publish on there or PDFs. Um, so you have you know, hundreds of sheets to, to rattle through, whereas actually you can you can see a lot easily how, how we're doing and you can click into um, reports as well so the public can have a look at and read the information through. Okay, that's everything that I was going to go through. Are there any questions before I go back? No, okay, let's switch back to the... Okay, any okay. any questions from Mary before we uh, move off the demo? I'll make sure that uh, audio is working for everyone or yeah, there's, there's one in the chat. Uh, is it possible to generate reports on historical data to identify areas of focus that is an area that struggles to meet deadlines from David Young's? Uh, yes, yeah, so whatever is in Smartsheet, you can you can draw reports on basically. So um, as long as the data is there and um, we have been using Data Shuttle to import data from um, from other systems as well. Uh, which we we've only just started to do, but is um, we're hoping to do it a lot more now. Um, so yes, as long as it's there, you can create reports and you can create dashboards. And there's another question about uh, uh, showing the comms plan. 
we can go into yes it. yeah of course yeah let me just switch back um okay let me Okay, so this is the one for this particular um, project. So there's nothing in here at the moment because um, we have, haven't been. Um, well, actually, this is the, one of the test versions. Um, but every every project and every uh, service area has a comms plan, and we use reports to then feed that all up to the comms team, um, and they have their own dashboard to actually see, you know, what's coming up, what's with what area so for example what's with the comms manager what's with the service area what's with the lead counselor to be dealt with um but we just it's a fairly simple um sheet just showing exactly you know asking what what the comms is and then how how are we gonna present that comms um and the type um and then let me just scroll across. We've got the current stage here, which is used for people to be able to actually see exactly what, what's being dealt with at what stage. Um, if there's any further information that you'd like to go through on that, though, I'm happy to, happy to find the other sheets if need to. Thanks, Mary. Uh, the next question is, do you capture all your procurement activity and contracts register through the system? We're hoping to, yes. <laughs> it is a work in progress at the moment um, and it's not all in place at the moment. Um, we've actually realised that, um, you know, it's actually all over the place. You know, I think, and that's part of one of creating this, we've actually realised that the, the more we create, the more we realise how much it's need, been needed. <laughs> um, for example, we, we thought, OK, we'll put contract management in um and and then we realize okay we'll go to legal for some of that information actually we also need to go to finance for some of that information and audit and actually it's all over the place so another reason for bringing it all in all in one place um but procurement is certainly a, a big part of that and we've included um we work with the procurement hub with which works with rother and wilden as well and so they'll be included in that in this as well yeah thanks so much mary and, and Stephen, feel free to chime in as well if you if you have uh, any. Anything. I think Mary's doing great on her own. I'm I'm going to go get a cup of coffee. I'm <laughs> the the next question is from uh, Hazel King, um, where they've recently started rolling out SmartSheet, um, and the question is how how did you roll the concept out to staff? Uh, how did you ensure everyone was using consistently? Um, you develop the worksheet centrally. Do you also need to coordinate project management training for staff? There are a couple of other things, but maybe we start there. Shall I take yeah, this one, Mary? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so um, uh, it, I hinted earlier that you know part, part of the, the, the rationalisation and part of the transformation program was to try and get a concept of project management instilled within the organisation um, and. Uh, coincidentally, when, when I started looking at, at what some of you may have remember that Kirklees created a Prince 2 Light and project management toolkit um, some time ago, and I was actually involved in that when I was in Kirklees. So when I was asked to look at the project management setup with, within Hastings, I was delighted to see that all of the templates still had Kirklees written on them, uh, were still available in a folder, uh, but nobody had actually really used them. Um, or, or looked at them or developed them or tried to translate them into what they meant for Hastings. Because the idea when we developed them with Kirklees was, you know, these were a set of, you know, now they look ancient in fairness compared to this. Um, but, you know, at the time they were about how do you create Prince 2 Light? How do you make it easy for people to understand uh, project management using the templates? And for those of you who've done Prince 2, then, you know, you've got these hundreds of different products, which was always confusing. Nobody really understood the terminology. So it was about how we translate that. So initially, I then sort of re-established them all to make them more specific for Hastings, got rid of loads of the different products, uh, crunched it down to what were the essential elements of project management, getting people to understand it's not rocket science. All it is is having a proper checklist about how you get from A to B. 
how do you get that black forest gutter in its easiest possible route? Um, and so we started to roll that out. Uh, we nobody really trained up, so we trained a few people up in uh, on the Prince Two um, Practitioner and Foundation courses. Mary was one of the first people to to do that, and the rest of the team, very keen, my team did that. Um, and open that up to everybody who's interested. So we started to create a, a cohort of people with project management. We've got some great managers, but not necessarily project managers, because the difference is, I'm sure you're aware, is a project manager can step back from it all. When you try to deal with everything in your day-to-day -day job, it's not quite as easy. So partly going back, working with the service areas, doing the business process mapping, making sure that they were very much part of the journey. So. We've not dictated to them how they should run this, how they should do that. What we're trying to do is to work with them, as I said earlier, collaboratively. How do you actually want to achieve? And these are some of the tools and some of the good practices that will actually help you do that. Um, and I think that's what's gained the sort of the trust and the understanding. Introducing Smartsheet on top of that. So as I said, we, we tried using MS Project as a, as a tool when people were using Excel sheets. Um, what I, what I have liked about this is, it, I think you've seen here, it's very easy. It's very easy to understand, very easy to use. And I think some of the things we haven't shown in here, and if you're not aware of Smartsheet, is the fact that because the PMO is because you can make comments on it. So you're not managing by email. You can use it for the comment section. You can record meeting activities almost in live time. You can add emails to it. You can add the documentation to it. So you know, it actually makes it so much easier. It's, it's it's not having to think about, oh, I need to put that in and then you have to save this folder to this or that to SharePoint or this to this. You know, it, it's the it's the centralization of it and it gives people that overview picture. And as Mary said, for things like, you know, team meetings, checkpoint meetings, you get that health check of where you're at. You can identify where we need to be working on as a team. So all of that, I think, is what what's got the acceptance going. Basically, it's been about you know, creating good relationships with people, not upsetting people as you go along, not saying <clears throat> to a point, not saying you have to do it. We have probably reached the point now where you will have to do some of this. You certainly need to complete your raid logs. You certainly need to complete your performance management. And part of that is offering the support and the training, hand holding where necessary, uh, you know, really working with a also breaking down a culture, we've, we've had a restructure internally, and I think part of that cultural change is about not fear of failure, not fear of blame. It's about telling us what you need. Where are your pressure points? Where are your risks? Yeah, and Don't hide them. We can only help you if we know what the problem is. And I think that has been a, a bit of a, a liberation for, for the staff as well. So people need to know they work in that open and honest, transparent way. Sorry, I've gone on far too long there. I hope, hope I answered your question. Thanks so much, Stephen. The, the next question there is the, the concept of a central management system is brilliant, albeit a mammoth task. How are you approaching this? And there's, there's another part, part B there, but let's start there. Mary? Okay, thanks, Stephen. Um, so, well, we approached it to start off with, with a bit of process mapping, just actually what do we need, what do we want? And it started off fairly basic and it has grown for you know the contract management bit was a, was a last minute add in um and i mean we worked with smartsheet um to develop it they created the blueprint for us and with us you know and we had weekly meetings with them and they were fantastic to help us do it and i think if we'd had to have done it ourselves it would have taken a lot longer to do and a lot of resources um so utilizing smartsheet to do a lot of that for us has been fantastic um and you know, we we have had to put a bit of time in, as you do, but um, I think everyone, once they've seen what, what it can do, most managers have actually been quite excited about it. And, um, you know, we did demos to a lot of the um, service managers and they've been like, right, great, when can I have it? And, you know, and as Stephen said, some people will use it more than others, you know, especially the service area section rather than the projects is, you know, they will need to use it for their raid items and they will need to use it for their performance monitoring. But, the rest of it, it's there if they need it. So like the delivery plan, we've put some basic tasks in them for, you know, generic tasks that any, any service manager may need. So health and safety reporting or filling in their performance reporting. Um, but up 
other than that, it's up to them whether they need to use it or not. Um, some teams have third party systems, which they already use. So we're not trying to duplicate work for them. We don't want them to create more work. We want this to hopefully help them and actually prioritise their tasks. So, um, but we as I say we've got that feedback form in so that, you know, we're not this isn't the end of it. And we're sure that there'll be further developments and we really want to make sure that we use their input into that as well. So I, I think just to, to add to that, Mary, in terms of like the capacity and time taken to, to build this, you know, you can see it's not quite complete. We've now migrated all of the various business as usual service areas into this. We've still got the projects to migrate into it. Um, but you know, we really started this sort of last September in earnest. So you know, to get to this stage in that short time, <clears throat> building on the knowledge and understanding we had of Smartsheet previous to the control centre, um, you know, hasn't been as massive as we thought. I had to make sure we allocated a lot of Mary's time and a lot of the other rest of the team's work on it. Um, but, it, you know, it's not been as big a task as I was initially anticipating, I would say. Yeah, I'll, I'll add a couple, um, a, a quick follow-up question, Mary. So I think it might be useful um, to just outline, you know, this notion of a blueprint. So creating a blueprint for a project, create and and blueprint in a you know, not not a smart sheet context, because that really uh, is a you know it 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 addresses so much of the challenge around not recreating a project every time there's a new project, not recreating the the flow of information across project to dashboards to portfolio yeah. dashboards, right? It's you you've 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 done the process mapping. You've created the blueprint, and after that, right, the system works. Um, so maybe if you could touch a little bit about that. Yeah, of course. So yeah, the the blueprint is basically a number of templates that um, that we have. So that includes all of the, the sheets that I've gone through and um, most of the um, the dashboards. Um, and what that does is every time you we we have an intake sheet, which is so for projects, they have to answer a number of questions and it goes through a number of approval processes, um, sort of internal stages, which includes all our um, what we call our PAG group, which is the um, proposal approval group and the COG, which is the council oversight group and, and so on. And that could go up to full cabinet, depending on the type of and the, the scope of the project. Once it's been fully agreed, we then activate it as such in our control centre. So what we do is then sort of press a button within the control centre and that creates um, the workspace for that project, which includes all of those sheets, the dashboards, any metrics or reports behind it. And it automatically does all of that um, for us and add all of those, the, the metrics, um, so the, the project reference numbers, all of that into those senior dashboards. Um, so we don't have to manually add, add them in anywhere. Um, so in regards to time, we did look at it before we knew about sort of control center. We did think, is this something that we could do? And we did create our own project template. Um, but actually to keep an eye on that and to have that o management oversight was just impossible. So this is, has made it possible, definitely. Yeah, and, and just to kind of add context there, Hazel, right? So uh, it can become a big task if the management of every project is is left to you know the effort of the project manager. They end up recreating you know, every project template, and now what we've done is create a blueprint, and you replicate the blueprint every time there's a new project, right? and and that just helps from a system standpoint. Um, uh, another question, Mary, for the projects, do you have defined phases such as project planning, implementation, etc. Or just leave it open to phase one, two, three, et cetera, for each project manager to define themselves. Um, yeah, yes and no, and it does depend a bit on the project um, and the size of the project, or it may be a program as well. So, um, the initial questions and the approval process, as I say, goes through on that intake sheet. So that's before they even get their um, project setup workspace. Um, and the idea is, is they use that initial bit within their service area. Um, delivery plan um, so they will project it through there first um, once they've got their project workspace we've put in a, a number of tasks into the delivery plan um, as guidelines so that may be um, setting up their PID their 
project initiation document. It may be um, speaking to the procurement. Um, it may be getting the, the budget sorted. So we've, we've put in a number of steps and a number of tasks that they may need to do. They can delete those out if they need to. Um, so, but it, j it just helps them. So if, if they're new to the project management side, um, then it, they have those prompts. Um, but hopefully if they're, well, and if they know what the, the project's about, they, they may be able to then add in the task later on. But what we have said to, to every, all of them is, you know, contact us if they need any help. So we're here to sort of help guide them how to use it and maybe start thinking about those initial tasks as well um, as they get used to the new system. Just possibly, uh, again, maybe to add to that, what we have on the internet is the project management toolkit. So there's a button and a guide through all of the steps that people need to go through. And I think sort of picking on the question about the approval processes, um, then, you know, there's a, that's very streamlined. It's not ad hoc. So each one of those sections of approval, depending on the type and size of the project, whether that's a councillor idea, because we've actually agreed with lead councillors that they need to get their ideas into the system. Because one of the things, I'm, I'm, maybe this doesn't happen in any local authorities, is a councillor will ring an officer and say, I want this, yeah? And it can be quite difficult for some officers to say no to councillors. So we've agreed with the lead councillors, that's fine, councillor, can you please complete in this ideas sheet? And they have to do that, it gives the, the officers some protection. If they have any problems with doing that, they, they can come to myself or to uh, the leader of the democratic services. And we again have the authority to say, sorry, councillor, we have a system for doing this. Um, and then they would also complete those. And then um, and then that goes to the uh, the PAG group, the pro proposal assessment group, which is brought in from the officers who would be directly involved in delivering that project. And they that do that first assessment. So this isn't senior management. There's a couple of us standing up members on it. But actually, it's having the officers who would be engaged in that particular project to do an assessment and a realistic understanding of it before it goes to the next stage. Um, and that, that's really important because it saves so much time and resource. In the past, I've seen officers going out, trying to get all of the evidence coming back. And it was a non-starter, in effect, to, to go ahead. And we don't have the time and the resource or the money, frankly, to spend time doing that. So, you know, we're very, very thorough about making sure we've got that initial assessment and then go through the right processes before a project's triggered. And we've tried to make that very clear on the on the internet, you know, easy walkthrough guide, um, so everybody knows where they are within the project. I mean, for example, um, you know, we're fortunate enough uh, to have been awarded the town deal. Now, that is a major piece of work that's gonna put a lot of pressures and a lot of resources on us as a council. So we need to be really thorough that we're no, not just going to approve these on a confirmation bias basis, if you like. We need to put the same rigor and the same uh, oversight into whether these are actually deliverable. And th this is where it's really important that we can have that, you know, genuine understanding of whether a project is go, no go at any point within it. Okay. Thanks, Stephen. Uh, we have another question about uh, intake. So. How do you prioritize projects from ideas to actual delivery? I was probably just touching on that, sorry. Um, so in terms of the priorities, it's about do we have the do we have the people? Do we have the time? Do we have the resource? Can we afford it? And through the assessment process, then that's where and then we would make recommendations at each of those points, as Mary says, depending right up to full council if necessary. Um, and you know, we're we're quite strict about this. This is the advantage of having this is if we go ahead with this, look at everything else that we're doing. If we want to go with this, what will impact on here? And having that in a place, it's almost like saying, OK, we really want to do this. OK, this is what we're currently working on. This is current engaged. What do you want to let go? Do you want to pause that? Do you want to spend extra resources on this? Do we move into this? Yeah. And it's having that oversight enables the executive you know i sit on the executive board i, I reform to the uh, to the um leader and the deputy leader and the md in the section 151 i can present all of these and say this is the impact this is where this will be happening um you know and, and it's really good to have that in a position where you can actually demonstrate this will be the impact how do you want to prioritize and we can't do it all frankly it's impossible we haven't got the resources and the time of the people to do that it's a very powerful tool 
thanks, Stephen. The next question is about uh, training enablement. So how many staff have been trained in building the smart sheet solutions within the council? Or are you ultimately responsible for designing, issuing blueprint templates to the staff? Uh, so we have um, around 23, I think it is what we call super users um, who are able to, to build within Smartsheet. Um, my team help, um, well, train train those people if they need it. Um, and we help help to maybe make a start on those creations sometimes. Um, but generally, we found that they're quite happy to go ahead and just get on with it. Um, it's quite intuitive being able to, you know, how, how to build on Smartsheet. Um, and also, I, I mean, I personally have found that the help help site on Smartsheet has been has been really good. Um, you know, I've self taught myself how to how to do it um, using the, those help guides and sort of, you know, interacting with other staff that are creating as well and coming up with different ideas. Um, I'd say the only bit that sometimes um, needs a bit more thought about is sometimes the the metrics to create the dashboards and things like that, um, where you're sometimes using the the calculations and functions. Um, but to create the basic sheets and to do the reports and to do basic dashboards, I would say little training is required to do that. Yeah, thanks, Mary. Uh, any other questions on the solution itself before we move to the next uh, next part of the session? Okay, let's maybe, uh, let's maybe move on. Mary, I know you have a couple more slides, so let's maybe uh, bring that up and close out. Oh, sorry, that's the wrong. No, sorry, let's just bring that back up again. There we go. Okay. Okay, so just to sort of round it off, um, and thank you for the questions, they, they were great, and also, again, happy to have any follow-ups with, with Mary and myself if, you, if something strikes you later. Um, but for us, um, I think we've sort of demonstrated this is giving us real visibility and transparency, and that, you know, is really important for us as councillors, uh, as councils. Um, you know, unfortunately for Slough recently, one of the criticisms was, where was the transparency? We've lost sight of what was happening, yeah? And so building in this level of transparency is a real asset to the council. We touched on again, the prioritizing, making better decisions, informed decisions, you know, working towards clearer and, and demonstrable results. Um, that, that again is really critical for, for me personally and for the council. And again, it's assisting us in achieving that cultural change, making a change in terms of the mindset allowing us to be a developing innovative learning culture and an organization that really wants to achieve with what it can so all in all very very helpful really powerful for us thank you next slide mary oh. <laughs> all right i think we've covered uh, a lot of the questions um if uh, there's one more. Do you have the enterprise license for the council? Mary or Stephen, do you want to take that? I'll let Mary answer that. Uh, yes, I believe it is the enterprise license that we have. For it. Yeah. Yes, and we will share a copy of the presentation and the recording if obviously Stephen and Mary are fine with that. Um, I have, uh, I guess I have one question to really wrap things up and, and close out. And maybe this is for you, Stephen. If I'm in the audience and I'm, I'm seeing the great work that you and Mary have done to build the solution, drive change, uh, and I'm thinking, how do I get started? Right? There's, there's just so much that you guys have built. Uh, what would your advice be in terms of that first step? Um, well, I think the first step is, is being here, to be honest. If, if you're, you're obviously interested in trying to get to a product like this or to try and think about how we do that sort of change. Um, have further conversations. You know, again, I think one of the important things is to talk to other colleagues. Um, you know, from, from my past experience, we're, we're very easy at saying, you know, not invented here. You know, we're not interested. You know, I, when I was, you know, head of innovations and challenge in, in CLG, that was always difficult to say, here's a solution. You know, somebody else has created it. You know, 
talk with us. Let's spread it out. Let's share. You know, it's so hard for us to try and build these things on our own. So, you know, think about what it is you want to achieve. If, you know, this is adaptable as well. So, you know, I've tried to base this on a lot of experience of, of common things for local government, but I really feel this is quite sort of almost shovel ready in a sense. So have have those conversations. Um, you know, we'd be happy to demonstrate this or present this to any of your decision makers, you know, saying, is this what you need? Is this what you're looking at? How you would want it? You know, so get that dialogue going internally. Um, you know, that that would be the first step. Um, I, I would assume, you know, in similar situations, that business process mapping, that analysis in terms of what the organization is trying to achieve within the things, you know, it, it's that sort of stuff. And then representing it back to the executive and saying, we think there may be a bit of a solution here or a bit of a help, you know, and it, it it's reasonable cost, you know, in terms of trying, because I know price is, is a critical bit, it is for me, you know, and um, I'm still a Yorkshireman, even though I live in, in Sussex. Um, you know, it's like, I really want to be very careful about what we're spending on. It has to be good value. Yeah. All right. If there are no other questions, I'll, I'll wrap up. Thanks so much, everyone, for joining. Uh, I hope you found this useful. Steve and Mary, again, I really appreciate your time both this morning as well as the partnership uh, over the last uh, couple of years, really, to help us, help you and the council. Um, if you have any questions, you should receive uh, a follow-up email with a, a link to a, a survey, but you can reach out uh, to us or, or directly to Stephen and Mary as well. Thanks so much again, and hope to see you on a future on a future call like this. Cheers. Thanks, Alfred. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.